Hello again, it's me, Slippin. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm so tiny today. Usually, I'd give you some contrived reason as to how I've landed myself in such a whimsical scenario, but today, for the sake of pacing and blatant creative bankruptcy, you're not getting one. I'm simply just fucking tiny. I do, however, have something I want to show you. Follow me. Just have to go down here. Ah, oh, Jesus. Here we are. Welcome to my ant colony. Isn't it beautiful? Today I am, of course, going to be showing you Empires of the Undergrowth, a game for us cranked up white boys by indie developer Slug Disco. Empires is a standard RTS game. You collect more resources, which allows you to create more units as you fight off your enemies and gradually commandeer the whole map. There is one big difference that sets the game apart from its other RTS counterparts. You see, Empires of the Undergrowth is a shameless piece of ant propaganda, a psyop, if you will, aimed at normalizing the impending ant takeover by having you actively participate in the building of your very own ant colony. One look at the Steam community page tells you all you need to know about these ant-loving degenerates. They have their own culture, their own memes, and they seem to have completely forgotten what it means to be human. So let's take a look at the actual game to understand how these poor souls are misled down the ant pipeline. Now, selecting the main story of the game starts you out with your queen and a handful of work ants as you're placed in a formicarium where you're being experimented on by shadow government scientists. Their goal? To breed a colony of ants which include all of the best, most elite species of ants from all over the world, all living together in a nest so diverse and inclusive it puts the Disney execs to shame. From here you must partake in challenges which takes you from the safe confines of your former and places you in the real world, where you must fend for yourself while achieving various goals. Rising Tide, for example, sees you securing your position on the high ground of the beach, as the tide slowly rises and neighbouring ant colonies are forced to push into your land for survival. My favourite challenge, however, is Frontlines, where you must amass your own allied force of ants to fight off an encroaching swarm of enemy ants. Yes, I know, I've already used this joke in my spore video, but do you really want to go there? I'll give you the first tip for free. Better make it a good one. Better knock me out cold. So let's talk about the different types of ants. First of all, we have the iconic protagonist of the main story, the gene thief ants. These little fellas are genetically engineered by the aforementioned shadow government scientists and have a disturbing obsession with eugenics. They feed their queen royal jelly infused with genetic materials of other ant species in order to have her pass down desirable traits. Oh dear, that's not very politically correct. My personal favourite ants are the big-headed ants, whose job it is to sit dormant in the nest and archive the rich history, culture and lore of the ants in their fat, swollen heads. As Einstein first wrote his famous E equals MC squared equation, quiet chuckling was heard below, as the big-headed ants bathed in the vain arrogance of knowing that the secrets which the world was just beginning to uncover had been housed inside their thick skulls for countless eons. Now, on the flip side of the we have the fighting classes of the nest. These brutes include the wood ants, who squirt their disgusting white goo out their abdomen all over their enemies. The leaf cutters, however, prefer to dump their loads right inside the queen's nest, where it's developed into a nutritious fungus for the colony to feast on. Mm. Now, before I played Empires of the Undergrowth, I didn't actually know this. Instead, I thought leafcutters simply ate their leaves directly. I was just a little dumb baby man. A mere larvae, if you will. Not yet hatched and aware of my own ignorance. But my ants have lifted me from my ignorance, out of the metaphorical Plato's cave, and have raised me out of the nest, where I'm able to observe the harsh beauty of the world of bugs. This proves that Empires of the Undergrowth is not just a game, but an educational and spiritual experience. I have sailed through the river of knowledge on a raft made from ants, and have rendered myself a wiser man. But with knowledge and enlightenment comes suffering. And no, I'm not talking about some kind of spiritual internal suffering, but instead a more literal, painful suffering. 
the type you might expect in a world full of disgusting Lovecraftian bugs. To survive in this world and become the apex predators of the undergrowth, you must grow your ant army to be able to take on the range of demonic beasts threatening your survival. These beasts include praying mantises, bullfrogs, and my personal least favourite of the bunch, the whip spider. To take them down, you'll need a huge army containing different types of ants. And if your army is substantial enough, your ants will make their way onto the creatures and overwhelm them with the sheer size of your swarm. But be careful about picking your fights, as if you're defeated, it could mean your nest and your queen being left completely defenseless. Luckily, there are a few things you can do to increase your chances. Most notably, you can gather and hoard food, such as leaves and other bugs, on designated food tiles. The more food food you have, the more units you can make. Each tile you put down represents one ant in your colony. If the ant that hatches on that tile dies, a new one is created on the same tile, as long as you have enough food to hatch it. Basic worker ant tiles cost 20 food to place, but to get bigger, more testosterone fueled ants such as the leaf cutters, you'll need around 150 food. Leaf cutters are tanky and are great for combat, as they give a combat buff to surrounding ants, but the cheaper worker ants can quickly carry out basic tasks, such as carrying eggs from the queen or gathering food, but you must make sure that you have a careful balance of different types of ants by spreading food out equally amongst your population. And now that you know the basics to improving your colony, you must endlessly grind the challenges in order to gain enough territory, food, and royal jelly to feed your colony, expand your nest, and unlock new ant species, as well as new skills for existing ones. Once you've leveled up your main colony enough, you can try your luck at the Formicarium challenge which will allow you to unlock the next set of new challenges. That is, if you succeed, which you likely won't, the challenges to progress are so insanely hard that the only way to beat them is by repeatedly beating the previous challenges, earning gradually diminishing rewards, which forces you to repeat them again and again. And if you fail, you don't earn anything from it, despite the fact that each challenge can take anywhere between 20 minutes. Honestly, I'm just like this. I'm not my mess. Truly, I'm trying to throw you Wow, great gameplay design choices. I am definitely not going insane. So, once you've sacrificed enough of your precious and limited time on this earth to the ant gods, your colony will now be large enough to take on any predator threatening your ants, at which point you will have truly become the empire of the undergrowth. Well, that's pretty much all I can show you about this game. Overall, quite a grindy experience, but very fun and addictive. A very unique and impressive game, especially for a small three-man indie team. One out of ten. The worst game I've ever played.